Okay, we're back with part two of torque and the cross product. Okay, so um, let's let's put some numbers in here and, and talk about units for a second. Okay, so let's say that um, you're pushing on this with five newtons of force. So that's five newtons. And let's say um, this is 10 centimeters. So from there, the axis of rotation to here is 10 centimeters. So that's uh, 0.1 meters. And I'm going to have this, break this into components. And um, I'm just going to tell you this, just to take my word for it, that this is um, 4 newtons and 3 newtons. Let's just say that those are the two components. Okay, now to reiterate what torque is all about then, torque is going to be R cross F. And R is called the lever arm. That's called the lever arm. And it's a vector quantity. And it's a vector that starts at the axis of rotation. So it starts at the axis of rotation. That's, what, that's what's rotating. And it ends at the point where the force is applied. So if the force is being applied right here, then that's where the vector ends. See how it starts and ends at, at those two locations? Um, the F is just the force then. But remember, this is the cross product. So we only want the part of the force that's perpendicular to R. I just want the part of F that's perpendicular to R. So I could write this as, this is the same thing as R, F, perpendicular. Um, another way of writing it is it's R times F times the sine of theta if theta is the angle between R and F. Okay, so the torque, if I were going to calculate the torque then, the torque is R cross F. So that would be um, R is 0.1 meters. And um, F that's perpendicular is 4 newtons. I only want that. I don't want the 3 newtons. It's exactly opposite of work. When work is done, uh, then you are using this component. But when um, torque is, when you're figuring out torque, you only want the perpendicular component. So uh, that's going to be 4 newtons. So the torque, just the magnitude now we're talking about, The, is going to be um, 0.4 newtons per meter or newton meters. So that's the unit of torque. It doesn't um, simplify into anything else. We won't simplify it into anything else, at least. So that's the unit for torque, newton meters. Uh, the English system of units for torque. Um, a lot of times you'll hear mechanics talk about um, not newtons times meters. But they'll say you get a certain amount of um, the the meters changes to feet and the newtons changes to pounds. So, but they don't call it pound feet, pound feet. They call it they call it um, foot pounds. So that's the unit for in, the English system is foot pounds of torque. You'll hear it, that a torque needs to be a, a certain amount of foot pounds, but that's the same thing as newton meters. Okay, um, I want you to know something about the, the cross product here. It's not commutative. You know how A dot B gave you the same thing as B dot A? Not true for the cross product. R cross F gives you the opposite value of F cross R. And more. I'll talk more about that later. But um, I want you to know something, though. The magnitude of R cross F is exactly the same as the magnitude of F cross R. So their magnitudes are the exact same um, value, dependent, no matter which way you do this. So what I'm saying is, is if you take the part of R that's perpendicular to F and multiply by F, you'll get the same exact number for your magnitude as if you took the magnitude of the force that's perpendicular to R and multiplied it by R. So it doesn't matter which one you take perpendicular to the other as far as magnitude is concerned. Okay, now why is that important? Well, because sometimes to compute torque, it can be pretty tough if you're 
trying to do r cross f and let's see here is r that's the the vector r and this is the force um, 10 newtons this way this is a, a rectangle and they're putting a they're, they're putting a force at one of the corners in this direction and they want to know this problem would want to know like what's the net torque on this rectangle well um, if you put a force that way you could do the the a part of r that's perpendicular to the part of the force that's perpendicular to r which would be you know this part of the force you know you'd have to do something like that and it gets messy so why not instead this line right here i'm drawing is called the line of action of the force the line of action it's just the line that the force acts in if you were to draw a line that was perpendicular to that to the axis this is the part of R that's perpendicular to F. Do you see how this is the part of R? That's R. This is the part of R that's perpendicular to F. So that's R perpendicular. That's called, it has a name, it's called the effective lever arm. And it's just much easier to compute the torque for this type of problem by just saying, um, well, if this is two meters, then that's two meters. If it's a, I, I want this to be a square. So two meters by two meters. So that means that this is one meter right there. That's one meter. So how much torque is caused? It's just going to be 10 newtons. Use the entire force, but then just use the effective lever arm, which would be uh, the distance from the axis to the line of action, the shortest distance from the axis to the line of action. So that would be one meter. So that's 10 Newton meters of torque. Okay, one other thing. If this force were put here, that would give you no torque. That would give you a no torque um, there's a few ways to explain that, but one of them is, look at this line of action. When the line of action goes through your axis, there is never a torque associated then with that force. So that gives you no torque. You can push as hard as you want on, on it that way, and you're not going to get this thing to rotate. Okay, let's, um, let's just talk real quickly about a meter stick that is being held up um, this way is down it's a half kilogram meter stick um, this is the axis and um, it's when you let go you're holding it here and when you let go it's going to fly down through the vertical so it's kind of like if i held this like this and let go see how that just goes flying down like that Foomp. well that's what's happening here it's going to go like that okay well, it's doing that. The reason why it's going to rotate if I hold it at one end and it goes, it, it goes down is because there's a torque on it. And the torque is due to the weight. And so um, let me show you how you handle this. Um, we're going to look at the center of mass of this meter stick being right there. And uh, mg is straight down. The lever arm is this distance. That'd be a half of a meter. Um, the, the meter stick is a very massive meter stick. It's five. It's a half a kilogram, or that would be um, five newtons. So the uh, net torque right now is R cross F. Now, how much of F is perpendicular to R? All of it. So you take all of the five newtons times a half a meter so that's two and a half newton meters okay so that's the that's the net torque on that meter stick when it first starts to fall it's two and a half newton meters and see how i worked with the force of gravity as though it were coming from the center of mass that's how you do that okay i'll see you in the next video